Today we're going to talk about how I pick my hotels as well as how I decide where I'm going to go, where I'm going to travel. So I must say that this current travel, I have not been really traveling a lot. I have been going a few places. Recently I went to Tai Ta Mesas. Um, I'm trying to say it right because it's so hard pronouncing certain words in Spanish with the accent is very hard for me. So I, how I pick where I stay. Okay, so first of all, let me talk about how I pick where I go first because that will determine how I pick where I stay. So it's what I do. I'm gonna show you Google Maps. So I grew up probably why I travel because I absolutely love maps. I love looking at maps. I love studying maps. Even like before maps were like online, I would always have maps. Like if you guys are like me, you're old enough to remember AAA, you know, you walk into AAA and you can get like maps. And I've driven myself across the United States like three times by myself with just an old school, old school map. Okay, before like so cell phones, before smartphones, before any of this stuff. And yeah, so I love maps. I love reading maps. I love looking at maps. I love, but my favorite part about maps is, is finding somewhere that people tell you is popular. For example, if someone tells me, I'm just going to say, okay, like I was traveling through the Boya, Boyaca region, Boyaca region, and someone would tell me, oh, go here. So I would look up that town, then I would Usually I go, if someone tells me to go somewhere and it's somewhere that I've never heard of, I most likely am going to go <laughs> because that is how I am. So is what I do is I go to Google Maps and I find the town that someone has mentioned to me and then I go on booking.com. I only use booking. When I first started traveling, I did Hostel World. I found that booking actually has more places, especially if you're going to travel to small pueblos in Colombia. Oh, I'm walking in Colombia because there's other so dogs. So hopefully it's not too distracting. So then I find this small town that someone has recommended to me. I go on the map and then I go open a Google map and I open my booking app. I type in the name in booking and I see what hotels or hostels are available because booking has hotels, hostels, and you can sort by cheapest family, solo traveler, you can sort all these things. Look at this new cow. This cow has must have been just born. Hola, baby. Hola, Torneo. Oh. Hi, baby. Hola. Oh my God, there's all these new little calves that have been born around here lately. I'm still in Antioquia, by the way. Cause, so first of all, I'm still in Antioquia, why? Because this is where I want to live. I want to look for a farm to rent or to buy. That is why I'm still in Antioquia, for starters. Secondly, okay, so Google Maps is open. I'm gonna show you all this behind the scenes too. So Google Maps is open, where I want to go is open, and then I open booking. I put in booking where that town is that I want to visit. Then, I see if there's anything anywhere to stay because I can't go to a town if I can't find somewhere to stay because even though yes you can just roll up to a town and book or walk into a hotel however at that point you're at the mercy of the hotel I show up and I'm a gringa and they can charge me whatever because they're not online I haven't found anything online sometimes you can go to the hotel website because Google has like places to stay that are not in booking I'm gonna tell you they're always more expensive so I do everything on booking because it's always a better rate. Especially if you're a genius three, you get discounts. Sometimes I get free breakfast, sometimes I get free things, 20% off, whatever. So I always do that. So after I know where I'm going, I go into booking, I find a hotel. I sort by lowest price first. And I usually book the cheapest place that they have that is the closest to the town center. Okay. if. For example, I had a few people comment that they preferred my old way of traveling because I went to a really expensive hotel. So let me put this into context how I travel. I, If I'm volunteering somewhere for one to two months and I'm saving money because I'm working in exchange for room and board, I will treat myself to a nice hotel because 
not everyone who follows me wants, bud wants budget backpacker tips. And some people, my friends especially, ask me, they say, Sarah, you always stay in hotels in the cheapest places around. What is it like if I want to come there and I can spend $80 a night on a hotel and that's fine. Hence, sometimes I stay in more expensive hotels. Not very often because yes, it will break my bank, especially if I'm not volunteering a lot. However, I happen to be volunteering. I had the money. I could spend the $40 a night on it for two nights and then I spent $80 because I spent the 80, here's why. I wanted to see what it was like. I wanted to see what, how much I could get for that amount of money and then compare it to what you can get in the US so you have a good frame of reference of what you can get where you can stay when you come here. Because I think that is important too because none of my friends are gonna come and stay in a hostel. None of them are gonna pay $13 a night to stay in a cheap hotel. I'm just telling you, that's just my friends. That's how they are. <laughs> and if they do, it's probably because I have made them and then the next time they're gonna be like, why well, I'm not staying there? We're not gonna do this. So therefore, I have to have a little context to tell other people who are not budget backpackers. Eh, eh, eh. No. These dogs are always crazy. Hey, pasa? Pasa? You little one, you little one. <laughs> They're crazy. They're crazy. I know. I know. I'm sorry. Lo siento. <laughs> crazy so and then yeah I pick I usually pick okay so after sometimes going to somewhere nice because for frame of context reference then when I'm going somewhere if I'm budgeting I will pick and stay at the cheapest place possible that is the closest to town or in the center of town so lately my travel since I've been traveling this year in 2020 2023 mostly 2024 well we just started but I have been picking places that are one I'm not doing shared rooms right now I stopped doing shared rooms when I came to Colombia this time <laughs> I've been trying to stay in a single my single room and I will do a shared bathroom fine but if I can get a private bathroom so one of the, uh, I'm not gonna tell you the real reason but one of the big reasons was Okay, so I'll tell you kind of some of the reasons why that is. Because I don't really sleep good in a bunk bed. And other people like waking me up and I can't sleep with earphones. I can't sleep with something in my ears. So I realized that I wasn't sleeping so great when I was staying in a hostel. So I started staying in my own room. And to be honest, they're, here in Colombia, they're not that more, much more expensive. So that might be a little bit me, of me splurging, but I just have to work a little bit harder to make more money, to make up for it. So I've been staying in my private rooms. I don't care shared bathroom, that doesn't bother me. And also second reason, I've been going to these really small Pueblos. Small Pueblos don't really have hostels. They have private rooms. You're either staying in a private room in someone's house or you're staying in like, I don't know, a small hotel, like a local's hotel. So that's why I've been staying in a lot of private rooms, private hotels, private things, because they just don't have hostel. They don't have shared rooms. But even if I do go to a hostel lately, I've been choosing shared or choosing my own room because I sleep better. I don't know if I'm getting older, that's probably why. But I do like the social environment of a hostel. And honestly, traveling to these small pueblos, you don't meet as many people. So I end up meeting the owners, hanging out with the owners, usually they're locals. So especially if they're not usually that busy. So anyways, back to, okay. So then I find my small town on Google. I go into booking, find the same small town. And then the second thing I do, once I'm in this small town, usually when you go to somewhere smaller, it's kind of been a hike to get there, right? You've had to take like two buses and you don't want to just go for like, I usually go somewhere for at least minimum four days. My last trip I didn't do four days because number one, Diamesis was hot. It was really hot and it was really expensive. And I had showed you, I had talked about hotels for $13 there. There was no availability that whole week that I was there to get that $13 hotel. To find that $13 hostel hotel, I had to book like two months out. So the cheaper places are gonna be booked out if you're a last minute traveler, last minute person like me. I'm very last minute, I do everything last minute. Okay, so if the place somewhere is really expensive, and I, but I still choose to stay there for a couple days, next thing I do to find somewhere else to go, 
I still am on Google Google Maps, right? Oh my god, the dogs are insane today. They're all barking. ¿Qué pasa? So then I'm back on my Google Maps and then I look for another small town near the small town that I'm in. Usually it's really close. Usually it's only a 30 minute drive away. I can take a taxi or I can take a local bus. And then I go do the same process. I see if there's somewhere for me to stay. And if there's a hotel, then I'll go there. So that's how I find my small places to stay. And the small, so that is how I find my little pueblos. That is how I find the little pueblos off the beaten track. And then I find somewhere to stay. So I find the place I want to go and then I look for uh, housing. Here's the thing. If that town does not have somewhere to stay, I will look for the next town over or somewhere closer. And then I will do a little bit more digging. I will go on and see if there's a hotel in the town and I will find the website. And sometimes on Google, you can find, it'll say, like you can go on Google and it'll say book through such and such website because there are other websites that they use here in Colombia. I'm not sure what they are. I never do that, but it's an option if that's what you want because that one little, there's probably one hotel in that little tiny town and it's probably gonna be expensive. And in that case, you can do what I did. When I went to Tibizosa, I just went for the day. It was a 30 minutes away. I went and spent the day in the little town and I had looked previously for places to stay and there were places, but it was like, uh, they're kind of expensive and the place I had, it was really nice. So I stayed in Duitama and I just went for the day and I still explored it, still showed you the video. So I was still able to explore it because there's still transportation going to that town, even though I chose not to stay there. So that's what you can do also for day trips. And then if you go to that town, this is what I do sometimes. If I find somewhere that does not have anything on booking, I will take the day trip to the town and go find a hostel or a hotel in the town by going and asking how much their rooms are and talking to people in the town. So that's something you can also do is, I talk to, I'm very uh, chatty, in case you haven't noticed. I talk to everybody, I will talk to everybody. I have no problem going into somewhere and be like, how much is a room, can I stay here, blah, blah, blah. If they don't have room, if they know anywhere that has room, I'll ask people at restaurants. So you can do that. And then I ask locals for recommendations on somewhere to go. And if they notice that you can speak to them in their language, they will recommend smaller places. They will recommend places that they only recommend to locals. And then they usually recommend somewhere to stay also. So, and then you can t ask them how much it's gonna cost. So you already know how much it's gonna cost from a local. And when you go there, you can say, oh, I was told, or when you WhatsApp them, or because everybody has WhatsApp, you can say, oh, so-and-so told me but this is the price of your hotel, is that right? They're gonna tell you yes, that's right. <laughs> because the thing is, most, most people are not like out to take advantage of you. People will take advantage of you if they can, obviously. We are humans and that's what a lot of us do. I'm not saying you, I'm not saying me, but I mean, it does happen. And if you can make money, more money, you're gonna make more money, right? But if you already come up to someone with like, hey, I heard this costs, I don't know, 50,000 pesos a night, they're gonna be like, oh yeah. They're just gonna be happy someone sent you the, their bit, you know, the business. So, yeah. So those are my tricks on how I go to these small pueblos and how I find somewhere cheap to stay. Booking, search for lowest first, and you might have to do a little extend. You might have to go out a little bit, but I'm gonna do a walkthrough and show you on my computer. But yeah. So, and ask, talk to people, ask around, ask where they recommend, ask where like. I always ask, oh, and something else, how I pick where I stay. I am horrible. I pick the most unsocial place. If somewhere has bad ratings because it's unsocial, I will stay there because I like quiet. I like quiet places. I don't always like to socialize. I don't, I don't need that. I'm not an extra, I'm not, sub, I'm, I'm not really extroverted. I'm pretty quiet. I don't really need a billion people to talk to. I can read a book, listen to my books, write, film. I can do pretty much. I don't really need to be stimulated by external things to be able to enjoy somewhere. <clears throat> so yeah, I don't know if that helped, but yeah, booking cheapest. <laughs> that's how you'll find it. You just do that, that's how you find the cheapest place to stay. Or you can pick by, you can filter your options by how much you wanna spend. And Google Maps is your best friend when you're traveling. Currently, I've been looking for places to live I've been using Google Maps for that also because I can be like, oh, what's this town that I can go online and search for places to live. So yeah, Google Maps. I love maps. If you like maps, 
you'll be fine. Ooh, there's so many cool birds. It just rained. It's so cloudy and wet and rainy here now. Oh, it's beautiful. Okay, hopefully this video helped. As you know, I blabbed on and on. See you all soon. Bye.